Well, welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel for uh, an exclusive enter here with Drew Zimmerman. He is the CEO of Stallion Discoveries, uh, recently name changed Stallion Discoveries. All the information in the making of this video is going to be provided in the description below. You can see there stalliondiscoveries.com has a wealth of information through news releases uh, and updates on the company's pro uh, projects. We want to welcome you to the channel here, Drew. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and, and give us kind of a brief overview on the exciting uh, land acquisition packages that we've uh, just recently turned out here as we've entered into 2023. Yeah, thank you for that introduction, Ryan. And it's a pleasure to be here to discuss our company and, and everything that we have going on with you. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, looking forward to your questions and uh, hopefully being able to really share our story and, and convey what we've been up to and what we've been building over the last two years with you and, and with your audience. So I, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, fantastic. And, and 2023 is, has started with a bang here. And, and so let's just get right into it. You guys have uh, acquired a, a massive piece of property up in the Athabasca. So I guess we can start there. And, and I think your, your name change really speaks to what it is that you guys do. You really are Stallion Discoveries. And I think it speaks to your ability to build more of a diversified suite of portfolio. But the Athabasca really speaks to your um, interest in going after the uranium market. Can you speak a little bit about that acquisition, uh, maybe how it came to be and how you were even positioned to make that move the way that you did here so early in 2023? Yeah, I mean, that's a, a very big open ended question. I could go on for some time uh, with all of that. But uh, I mean, just to, to, to back it up, I guess, a little bit from the start, I mean, the inception of, of Stallion came about a little more than two years ago. Uh, we've ended in our, our first project in, in Idaho, a gold project. And the gold market really softened and, and the capital markets uh, really softened. The liquidity wasn't uh, all that prevalent for junior exploration companies over the last year and a half. Um, but we had a, a treasury that uh, we'd built up when, you know, things first launched and things were good. And, and I really, you know, took care of that treasury. That was a big priority of mine was to manage that incredibly well. Uh, we did everything we could to keep the burn as low as possible. And that allowed us to really be dutiful in looking at additional acquisitions rather than not being able to do anything at all. So during the downturn when the gold market really wasn't that good, we optioned a, a property in, in Nevada off of Emax royalties. We did that on very good terms because it was a year ago when nobody was really all that excited about gold exploration. That area wasn't all that uh, exciting compared to, to what it is now. And, and we'll definitely get into that later. And even with that, we came into the beginning of this year with a very strong treasury that allowed us to take the jump into these Athabasca Basin properties. So they came about uh, at the end of last year. And by the time we got through negotiations, we were able to close on those transactions at the beginning of this year. But again, being able to do that because we were very cognizant of running very lean and mean over the last two years when the market really wasn't ready to get excited about junior exploration names. And, and we think that's turning. Uh, we think that's, you know, really going to gain some more traction, get a little bit more exciting as we go forward. And, and why we made the acquisition is not only were the properties themselves, uh, you know, just a, an incredible package that we were able to put together. Uh, but we think both the uranium market and the gold market are ready to run now. So, you know, there's going to be a little bit more energy in, in both sectors that we're, we're working on. And again, I mean, I, I, I try and walk people through a little visualization because we've got over 300 square miles of property that we just acquired in the Athabasca Basin. So a little visual that I'll, I'll do for the listeners here to put that into perspective. If you jump in your car and you're going down a straight highway, as most of them are in Saskatchewan, northern Saskatchewan, you can see about three miles either side. So six miles if you're looking out both windows and you're driving for 75 miles an hour, you're driving for 40 minutes and all you see is our project. That just gives you an idea of, of how big of a land package this is. So it, it is huge, it is big, and the potential of it is, you know, what just absolutely keeps us up at night with excitement. Um, so, you know, we're, we're very fortunate to have picked it up. And, and again, it's 
given the fact that we gave ourselves the position to be here, to be able to pick it up, we were doing due diligence on a ton of different projects over the last year and a half. And, you know, we really did wait until the very best came about. And, and when they did, we, we jumped at it quick. And, you know, as you can see, uh, the market's really appreciating that and, and we're ready to run this year. And, and again, we think both resources that were in gold and uranium ready to go and, and couldn't be more excited. I couldn't agree with you more on uranium. And I think it's sustaining here with the push toward, you know, more uh, of, the, of the green energy um, type of revolution that we're in right now. It seems like this revolution is going to stick. So I think we do have some staying power. Talk a little bit about the Athabasca Basin specifically. I mean, you, you you just bought this package in the most prolific region in the in the world. And so I guess my thought when I was doing my research on stallion discoveries is, did you see the opportunity in the region as a whole? Or did you look at the property specific and like what you saw there specifically with the property? It, it was It was all of the above. Um, you know, we think the macro environment for macro, uh, or for uranium, sorry, as you briefly touched on is, is in incredibly compelling. You know, I think as a world that's trying to, you know, reduce our, our carbon footprint, uh, you know, nuclear is a very logical way to go. Uh, you know, it's incredibly clean, uh, efficient baseload energy. And again, baseload being very important, um, you know, the world used the most coal we've ever used just last year. So, you know, getting up to this point, you know, we, we are bringing a lot of renewables, but they tend to be very intermittent. So we need to look at very practical solutions. And I think nuclear is going to be a big part of that. I think a big part of what also really made this work for us is the people that we have involved with our story. So on the board of advisors and a, and a very significant shareholder of Stallion Discoveries is uh, a man named Stephen Stanley. He was Hathor Exploration, uh, the original Hathor Exploration. We also, uh, funny enough, you know, that was the name of the company that we took over and it was much the same land package that Hathor Exploration had a decade ago. But Hathor Exploration a decade ago was one of the darling stories of the Canadian mining space. It went from an exploration story to a discovery of the Rough Rider deposit and Stephen orchestrated a bidding war between Cameco and Rio, which was ultimately won by Rio for $650 million. They purchased half or so. To have somebody on our board of advisors, uh, other key shareholders of ours were, were also key players in putting the original half or deal together. Yeah. Large shareholders of NextGen, which is you know the current darling of the Athabasca Basin. I mean, they've just done incredible work in not only finding the Aero deposit, but bring that uh, forward and they're going to be developing that into to one of the largest uh, high grade uranium deposit uh, mines uh, in the world. So, I mean, not only is the Athabasca, you know, again, 10 to 20 times the, the grades that you see anywhere else in the world. So as we, we want to use more uranium, you know, we need to find high grade deposits that are, are very economical. And I think the Athabasca really is bar none, the best place in the world to be doing that. So again, it, it's, it's a lot of things coming together that just made so much sense for Stallion Discoveries to step into this story, to step into these land packages. You know, it was, it was the opportunity to be in the best jurisdiction for uranium exploration. It was projects that were neighboring some of the biggest mines uh, and current discovery projects in the basin. And it was having the right people that uh, have a ton of experience and have done you know, exactly what we're trying to do in the basin. And that is make a massive discovery. You know, we're not uh, building this company to look for small economic projects uh, yeah. on the side. We're looking for those big projects that will really move the needle. And, and that's, you know, how we've gone into thinking about everything that we do and every project that we've taken on and brought into this company over the last two years has been with that singular focus of, what gives us the very best odds and the highest likelihood of finding a massive discovery. And, and that's what we're doing. Short, well, and short and simple. Yeah. And uh, as we enter into 2023 into the spring and summer, you have strategic projects um, to get you the answers that you're going to need to know to kind of try to localize those priorities. We'll talk about that in a second, 
But just for the viewing audience, please, let's jump to the domestic here in Idaho and Nevada and speak about your exciting projects that you have here uh, in our backyard here in the U.S. for our, our U.S. patrons, because you're, you've got a pretty diversified uh, portfolio of, of, of land assets. So can you speak a little bit on that and just kind of introduce the group to those those projects in Nevada and Idaho, respectively? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So I'll start with Idaho. That was uh, our first acquisition in Stallion. Uh, it's an incredibly large package in the center of Idaho. It's 699 mining claims over 5,800 hectares. So again, very large, very underexplored. So a lot of opportunity to bring the value into this project. But the other key aspect of this is our entire eastern border is shared with Perpetua Resources. Indeed. Perpetua Resources is, is in the process right now of permitting to build their mine and mill. So this was an old wartime mine site. It was uh, mined for antimony, tungsten, and gold, uh, producing most of the U.S.'s antimony through the war effort that was World War II and uh, the Korean War as well. So very significant in the fact that right now the U.S. has no antimony production domestically. It, it relies on antimony from all other sources. And it's a, it's a big factor in ammunition. So the Department of Defense is really looking for places that they can find antimony domestically. And the Stibnite project uh, right next door to us is one of those key places. So our project also had a smaller amount of antimony production on it uh, during that same, same time period. Our, our secondary target on the project is called Antimony Ridge. Our key focus though is gonna be uh, an area called the Golden Gate Fault Zone. We've uh, got some historical drilling there that was done in the late 80s that shows us there was, uh, you know, oxide gold there, a gram and a half over 35 meters, which for, for oxide gold is, is very good numbers. And we did some soil samples and geophysicals over the last two years that gave us, you know, even more confidence that we've got a 2.8 kilometer strike length uh, fault zone there that has anomalous gold. And we're in the process right now of, of getting drill permits to get out on that project and, and drill it to both reaffirm those historic holes. And, and in, in the discussions that we've had with our own geologists, as well as some of the geologists at, at Stibnite, um, just in general discussions of what they're seeing in their you know, geological formations and where the mineralization is, it tends to be a little deeper. So we definitely want to go deeper than those historical drill holes are to try and find some higher grade gold and, and, and more bulk tonnage of gold as well. So we are very confident and very excited um, that those drill results are, are gonna be uh, a pretty exciting news flow for our company. Again, we're expecting get, to get that permit in the next few months uh, with the intent to be able to get out there and, and drill that later this year. Um, so again, very exciting. Any exploration company you know, can change on a drill hole um, you know, I, I want the investors to know that that's something that we work towards. It, it really is, you know, a single assay can, can create a tremendous amount of value in an exploration company. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, and our, our project in Nevada has just continued to, to build excitement, um, you know, not just because of, of what we have planned for it, um, but because it is right next to I-80 Gold. So, I mean, there's you just take a look at their ticker symbol IAU it's incredible what they've done uh, you know they've gone from a, a 400 million market cap to a 900 million market cap in the last couple of months and that is predominantly on the back of the drilling that they've been doing at the Ruby Hill project which we're right next to uh, in Eureka Nevada that whole deposit that they've been drilling out is is not only seven and a half million of ounces of gold in the ground but now they're finding a carbon replacement uh, deposit as well, which is full of zinc and lead and, and silver, as well as some high grade gold. So the whole jurisdiction is, is just getting a lot more attention. Uh, a property or a, a company just to the south of them, Paycor, uh, just announced a $16 million financing at the end of last week. So uh, again, they're a 50 million market cap company. We're right next door. They're just to the south. We think the whole area is getting a lot more eyeballs, a lot more excitement. We think it's going to be one of the key areas in Nevada that people are paying attention to for gold exploration. And, and again, this is in the state that is producing about 80 percent of the U.S.'s gold as we speak right now. So to say that you're going to be one of the hottest areas, 
of the predominant state for gold in the United States is, is, is a pretty uh, compelling place to be. And, you know, we're very happy to have picked up this project. And again, picked it up before this area started getting this kind of attention and picked it up when gold prices were a lot lower and the interest wasn't there. So we picked it up at, at a very good deal and we're happy to be partnered with EMX on that. And it is an option to own 100% of it. And we'll continue to drive uh, the value with our initial work programs that we have set there. It's, that's super intriguing. Um, you know, I, and I wish you guys all the best here in 2023. You know, I, I was intrigued as well, but you know, as a, I'm not in the mining space, right? And the way that you explain what it is that you're doing is very helpful for our investors. It's helpful for me. When I looked at it, it sounds like to me, you guys kind of got in on the radar. I, I kind of want to talk a little bit. Was there competition for these properties or are you guys in an elite class here that had the knowledge to go after this? Was there a lot of people that, you know, were in competition? Because I looked at the Athabasca, I looked at your neighboring properties and I thought, how, how did they pull this off? And you pulled it off in a relatively short amount of time. And I, I think you guys need to be absolutely commended. Uh, but can you speak a little bit about kind of the, the competition a little bit? I mean, Nevada wasn't just recently discovered, Drew. You know, it, it's been pretty prolific for a while. It's been a gold mining friendly jurisdiction for quite a while. But I looked at it and I thought, how did they do this? Can you yeah. speak a little bit about that? No, absolutely. I mean, it, it does come back to the four key pillars that we you know, have based this company on, which is starts with jurisdiction. Next is the projects, again, large underexplored projects next to world class deposits or discoveries. Um, and then the people that we have and the share structure that we have as well, we can get into that later. But what gave us the ability to do that was knowing that was what we wanted to do. So when the market was slow, we still had that game plan in mind that we wanted to be looking for acquisitions that were going to be incredible targets in the right area, in the right jurisdiction next to incredibly successful discoveries and or deposits. So that's how we, we went about searching and, you know, <laughs> not to no pun intended, but we turned over a lot of rocks uh, in, yeah. in looking for these projects. And, you know, you only know you have a good project when you look through a lot of other projects and, and that's when you know, and you have the confidence to really go after uh, the ones that are the good ones. So. When Nevada came up, I, again, um, it, it really wasn't that much of a fight to get after Nevada. And that's how we were able to uh, negotiate good terms on it. Uh, again, yeah. when the gold, the interest in gold just wasn't there. Um, so that was a good timing uh, on our part. And again, it was, you know, going after something when, when nobody else was paying attention. I, I can't say the same for the Athabasca, you know, this uranium market didn't just uh, appear after our news releases. Um, the yeah. uranium market was hot before, and this is a very compelling package. So again, the cash position that we had to be able to come out and, and offer uh, mostly all cash uh, for these acquisitions. And, and again, it wasn't a significant sum, but it was at a time when a lot of companies didn't have a significant amount of cash laying around to be able to make acquisitions. So that helped us. Um, and again, you know, it takes a village to be able to run these sort of companies and, and make these sort of deals. And that's where I lean on some of our key stakeholders uh, in helping us, you know, close these out. And, and again, guys that have been in the basin for a long time had, you know, tremendous success in the basin. Uh, that sort of track record allows you to, you know, pull some of the intangible uh factors that go into these deals to your side uh, away from some potential other groups. So yeah. we lean on the leverage and experience of everybody that we have in, involved uh, in the Stallion Discoveries projects. And, you know, I, like I say, I, I commend everybody that is part of this team because it is not just me. It, it really does take a village. And, and again, it, it shows that you're able to get significant things done when you operate that way. And, and that is how we got the Athabasca Basin projects. And, and as you say, I mean, a tremendous land package and strategically located throughout. I mean, prolific in the in the West, but strategic packages in the East as well. So it, it was a bit of a battle and it made for a, a longer holiday period. Obviously, that was uh, when we were 
negotiating those deals to be able to come out through the uh, at the beginning of this new year. But uh, very excited to have got it done. And uh, I, th I think, you know, it's just going to lead into uh, a tremendous amount of, of work, but also a tremendous amount of excitement as we go into 2023. Yeah, I think you guys have got it earmarked through 2023, your plan for the geophysics and the Athabasca and the continued drill right here in the U.S. What type of capital expenditure is going to be needed and how are you balancing against your current financial posture now? And I guess the lead in to that is you can go ahead and talk about the capital position of the company, the share structure, but I was more interested in you've got these massive swaths of land. How is it that you take this, you know, the bite out of the elephant or or move mountains in this and strategically allocate capital to be conservative, but also get you the answers that you need? Can you speak on that, Drew? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as we, we discussed off the top with 300 square miles, it's an incredible amount of land. And a lot of the time, these high-grade uranium deposits have a fairly small footprint. So, you know, you are looking for a very small target over an incredible amount of land. So how we look to kick that off is we'll be engaging with uh, some geophysics companies that will be able to fly airborne geophysics. Um, so that's either from a helicopter or a plane. And that's just how you're able to cover, you know, every inch of uh, a land package that's that large. So. That's really going to give us the next indication and we'll be relying on that data as it comes in. Um, you know, we, we'll be looking for conductors. They tend to be the roadmap, uh, especially initially in that area that you're able to follow up on and, and do some more zoomed in work. So again, doing very high level broad work that's able to give you those, those narrower targets that you want to continue to follow up on. Uh, and that eventually gets you down to, hey, this this area right here is is where we want to put the drill to, you know, ultimately test what we're we're theorizing is there. But you yeah. start very broad and you just continue to narrow in. And and again, doing it from the air is the only way really to cover that kind of ground, you know, efficiently and, and effectively. So that's what we'll be doing there. Um, you know, I did talk about coming into this year with a good cash position, even after the acquisitions. Uh, you know, we have a, a cash balance that allows us to kick off these exploration efforts. Um, and and then, yeah, moving forward, you know, we will look to do a financing. Um, I think, you know, the exploration on the projects that we have dictates a, a pretty strong exploration effort. Not only do the projects themselves merit that, but the markets are telling us right now that now is when you want to be doing that exploration effort. The markets you know are looking for both of the the sectors that we're in the resources that we're looking for so we think it really dictates going after them and, and going after them you know fairly aggressively to to see what we can find and and again ultimately it, it comes to finding something but we think we've given ourselves the opportunity um, to find everything and on every single project that we have so uh with that in mind you know we we continue to march things forward and and for our shareholders, we want to create a lot of value. And, and that's where I would touch on, you know, over the last two and a half years, you know, we've done a lot and our share count is at, at 63 million shares. So, you know, trading at 32, 33 cents, uh, again, Canadian on the TSXV, I'm talking about, you, you quote it a little differently in the US, um, but we're about a 20 million market cap, just over 20 million market cap company. So we still have a ton of value that we think we can create for our, our shareholders. And again, being very cognizant of where we raise capital, you know, dilution is necessary for an exploration company. That's how we fund the work that we get to do. But the ROI of those dollars that we bring in when we spend them efficiently and effectively and get them into the ground and, and hopefully again, get them into finding a discovery can be incredible, you know, the, the run-ups that you can see. So, I mean, the Athabasca Basin just, just recently, uh, we're right next to and share a border with Vision 3.0. You know, they were a discovery company just like us and they hit on their discovery hole and they went from 25 million to 150 million market cap in the matter of a month. So, you know, that is the kind of moves that we're looking for. We're, we're doing everything that we can to make those types of discoveries. You know, the, the growth of I-80 Gold next to us in Nevada, uh, you know, that's a big company. But again, they're proving a ton of value with their discovery and the drilling that they're doing. 
and we're coming from a much lower base and a much lower share count. So we think that, you know, we're not going to be discovering quite on the size that I-80 is. Obviously, they've got six drill rigs going down there now. But yeah. you know, if we can find mineralization that they're finding, we think that, you know, there's a tremendous amount of value that can be created for our shareholders. And, you know, the nearest uh, drill hole that we will likely be drilling is in Idaho. And, and again, significant deposit next to us there, high confirmation, you know, internally and uh, that we have, you know, a significant amount of gold there. And it's just going out there and being able to prove that to the market and, and again, create uh, value and excitement for our shareholders as we make, you know, discoveries. Again, we, we named it Stallion Discoveries because we think we have that potential and, and we're very excited about it. Uh, we're going to be monitoring your story close. And uh, like I said, I would invite each and every one of you to visit the website, stalliondiscoveries.com. There's fantastic information, well laid out. Um, certainly, thank you, Drew. Really appreciate the time. As we kind of uh, segue away from the interview here, I, I'd like to give you the opportunity to give some kudos to the team. I always like to, it's not just about you. Um, you're the top guy, but certainly can't do it without the, the compliments of your team, right? Um, so I'd like you to just uh, kind of summarize what you've got going on there with your with your team at Stallion Discoveries uh, for the for the grander share owners in the company and anybody that's interested in uh, in the story. Absolutely. Um, so, again, the president and, and VP of exploration here at, at Stallion Discoveries, Bill Breen, he lives down in, in Hope, Idaho. He's, he's actually the mayor of Hope, Idaho. So he's our, our man on the ground. I mean, yeah. He knows everybody in the uh, exploration game in, in Idaho and Nevada and, and a tremendous asset uh, for us to have down there and just, you know, lives and breathes the exploration geology and, and a tremendous value for our team. Also, I mean, we've got Jay Martin on our board. We're going to be at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference this coming weekend up here in Vancouver. That Jay Martin is the CEO of that company. So he also has one of the uh, biggest uh, content libraries of uh, finance videos in Canada. He does a tremendous amount of interviews with the who's who throughout finance in Canada and, and especially the resource side. So the connections that the Jay is able to put in front of us is, is tremendous. Uh, his network is, you know, unprecedented. Uh, so having him on the board goes a long way as well. As I mentioned off the top, uh, you know, Stephen Stanley, uh, he's, he's really helped me grow as a CEO, uh, you know, somebody who's, who's been there and done that and had incredible success uh, with his last company in the basin. So, being able to uh, lean on him and, and call him a, a, a mentor goes a long way for me and goes a long way for helping Stallion and, and Stallion shareholders. So uh, I, again, it is a, a whole team effort. It takes a village to really make these go. And, you know, again, huge kudos to them. And, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that. Yeah, fantastic. And just, uh, I'm going to give you the last word, Drew, but on behalf of the channel, we really want to thank you. This was amazing to hear your insights. Uh, I, I always look at these as opportunities for viewers to the channel to identify with companies that they would have never discovered on their own. And that's the whole idea here is to introduce these companies and hear it firsthand. You guys are doing some really exciting stuff and you've jammed it into a couple of years um, and, and started off 2023 with a bang here. But if we've missed anything, Drew, uh, certainly your opportunity to, to speak to the viewing audience now as we look to close down the interview. Uh, but just want to thank you so much for your time this evening, Drew, um, in, uh, in coming on and, and sharing your thoughts with us. No, I, I appreciate the ability to do it. Um, again, we, we had been flying under the radar as we you know, conserved our capital and, and put together what we thought was going to be the right packages in the right jurisdictions and being able to really launch it and, and run with it uh, at the right time. And now is that time and, and being able to come on your channel and share it with your viewers uh, mm -hmm. is, is what we want to be doing at this point. We think we've put together a very compelling story with, you know, a very high chance of success at, at finding, you know, not only one discovery, but hopefully, several discoveries both throughout the basin and in Idaho and Nevada and getting that story in front of people so that they can be part of our story as well. So again, one of the things I, I always try and remember or remind people because uh, sometimes you just forget is 
stud is our ticker on the TSXV and STLNF is our ticker on the OTCQB because we want people to be a part of the story. We think there's going to be a lot of value created and, and a lot of wealth created. And if people get engaged and get involved, uh, they'll learn more about it. And as they learn more, I think they'll, they'll find it's an even more compelling story than what they saw at first blush. You know, we've put together a, a hell of a package and, uh, you know, we have a great team behind us to really continue to push to to deliver value for our shareholders. And and that's the ultimate goal why we're here. So we're really looking forward to the opportunity to do that and really looking forward to, to what's to come in, in 2023. Well, I think you guys have set yourself up for a wealth of catalyst here going forward um, with these packages. And we wish you all the best. We'll be monitoring the story. Uh, Drew, don't be a stranger. We want to have you back on the channel to continually update our, our viewing audience on the progress. Drew, thank you so much uh, for, for doing the interview and uh, all the best to you. And we'll be tracking your progress. Thanks, Ryan. And can't wait to be back with more updates. Indeed. Thank you, Drew. Be well. Thank you.